Hello and welcome to my brand new podcast. I'm Nikki Raby and I'm thrilled that you're joining us. I do lots of things. I'm an actor, coach, writer, speaker and a mum. And in my coaching work, I work with creatives, personal brands, freelancers and small businesses. In this podcast, I want to talk about success, but not in the traditional sense. I want to bring you conversations that discuss success, what it means, and how there are many different versions. We're going to be talking about business, branding, becoming visible, saying no, saying yes, and how you can create a thriving portfolio career doing more of what you love and less of what you don't. Sometimes there can be a certain mystery around the online world, so I'm going to be asking my guests how they started and grew, how they get paid, how they stand out, and how they create success on their terms. As always, please check the show notes for all things we mention and come and say hi over on social media at Nikki Raby or via my website, nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast. In today's episode, I'm talking to Lola Hode, who is a creative business coach, a writer, a podcaster, and founder of One Girl Band, a collective and a co-working space for female entrepreneurs and creatives. It's based in Brighton if you want to check it out, and that's your neck of the woods. We talk lots about visibility in this episode and finding a way and a rhythm that your business can work in a way that feels really good to you. In the early parts of the episode, Lola talks about mental health and how she's made friends with it and how she has created this business that really works alongside other elements that she wants to nurture in her life. If you want to come and join the conversation, of course, come over to Instagram, instagram.com forward slash Nikki Raby. We're always chatting about the episode there. Or you can come to my Facebook group, Dreaming and Doing with Nikki Raby. And also, if I may ask, if you like the episode, would you mind reviewing it or subscribing or sharing it with a friend? I would really love that. Thank you so much. And for now, uh, let's get into the episode and chat to Lola. Lola, welcome to the podcast. Hello, thank you for having me. Oh, thanks so much for being part of it. Um, (laughs) I'd love to start by a little introduction, like what you do and what you're all about. Oh, okay, I'll try and be as... (laughs) Coherent and concise. Can you tell me your elevator speech. Oh, do you want to hear it? Okay, are you ready? No. <laughs> um, I'm Layla Hode. I am a creative business coach, writer, podcaster, speaker, uh, and the founder of One Girl Band, which is a collective and co working space for female entrepreneurs and creatives. Um, <laughs> whoa, this is so good. Um, so, uh, that common denominator throughout is there's a lot of sort of self-development, yeah. self-empowerment, all of that kind of jazz and good stuff. How did your, I'm going to say it, your <laughs> journey start? How did it, how did that kind of world start to open up for you? Oh, I mean, I think I, I'm, I, I very much believe that our journeys never end. <laughs> like we're just constantly finding new things, finding different directions and going on different paths, which I think is totally okay. It's totally okay to evolve and to change your mind and to change your direction. Um, But kind of self-development really came into my life when I suffer quite badly from mental health issues, kind of uh, depression and a panic disorder. So I've always kind of had my head in that world, Mm -hmm. kind of trying to be in in air quotes, a better version of myself. Yeah, <laughs> which I'm kind of. I, it's funny. I'm having a bit of a love hate relationship with that phrase at the moment because I feel like, <laughs> when are we ever going to be the better versions? Are we not just? Are we not like? What's wrong with the versions we are now? Kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm having like in in with self development in general. I'm having a real kind of a weird time with it. But it mostly came into my life when I was seeing a psychotherapist and all the stuff she she'd just kind of say one line as I'm like wow that's just changed my life just just that line you just said has changed my life and so I started kind of getting into books and podcasts and a lot of my friends are coaches and in that self-development world so I was listening to them and it was really just just trying to figure out what on earth was going on in my head and how I could just yeah how I could really navigate it all 
I think that is so key because I think certainly when we were at school, we it was still very much, you know, the World War One thing of stiff upper lip, keep going, whatever happens, get yeah. on with it. It wasn't even mentioned. And I feel like that was only a couple of generations ago. But yet nothing well nothing has sort of got easier if anything with technology and being available all the time it's um these tools and as you say are so needed to navigate um what can sometimes be some pretty funky stuff yeah i i i just think it's a comfort it's a comfort kind of knowing okay i can work out what's going on like i i i have these tools i have these resources and I do think, like I said, I am having such a weird relationship with that at the moment because I feel like it's turning into quite a, quite like a, um, just, it's just going down a path that it wasn't made for, if that makes mm. sense. Like I feel like we're being told it's our fault, so we need to change. So we need to develop ourselves into these better people. And it's almost like, but are we not okay now? Like, we're not yeah. killing anyone. We're not looting. We're not kind of, we're not bad people. We've just got stuff going on in our heads. And so I am, as I said, like I'm having a weird relationship at the moment, but I feel like mental health in general has become less stigmatized because of this yeah. self-development era we're in. Totally. And thank goodness, because I feel like sometimes the world is so glossy, and especially this world of, like we were just saying before we came on the call, of the self-development and everything looking gorgeous and branded and all of that. Mm. And um, it was Freelance Heroes Day yesterday, and I did a Instagram Live, and I did that thing of bathing my son and then going, oh, I'll, I think just while I lie down with him, I'll just put my Jimmy Jams on as well. <laughs> and then I had that moment about 10 past 7 going, oh, no, I said that I would do that Instagram uh, Live. But do you know what? I did it in in my Jimmy Jams because it was yeah. that sense of actually this is what freelancer look, life looks like. Mm. Like whether you have a child or a dog or a parent that needs your help or mm. you're doing something else that there are different ways of working. And I think um, it was really lovely because I got a great response from it because actually people were like, oh, oh, that's me. Not like I'm sitting there going, yeah, I've just had a blow dry and yeah. <laughs> looking fabulous. Because the reality of it is the exactly. reality. Exactly. And how did the the workspace um, occur? So um, what were you feeling and seeing and, and what was going on for you that you knew that you needed mm. to create something that perhaps you weren't finding elsewhere um so one girl band existed before the space the space opened march last year march 2017 but one girl band sort of started may 2015 i'd been in business for a year with my first business lx design which was a paper goods design studio um and it came about completely selfishly, really. I was just feeling incredibly lonely, incredibly isolated, um, working for myself and not leaving the house and working Which horribly is long. for mental health. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's like the perfect cocktail for mental <laughs> yeah. health, like the long days inside, not Although seeing friends. All the voices and the self-doubt, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Oh forgetting God. what air feels like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it was all that. And I was seeing all these amazing women on social media creating their own lives, doing their own stuff on their own terms. And I was so inspired with it. And I l absolutely loved seeing it. But I was also crippled by self doubt in comparison and just seeing other people looking like they've got their life together. Yeah. And me just going, I do not have my life together. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I, I'm making no money. I'm working so so hard with no payoff and everything like that and it wasn't until I sort of started connecting with these women and building relationships online that I realized everyone felt exactly the same and that was honestly just it was a revelation it was just oh we, we all feel this way <laughs> it's okay and I kind of knew I needed to get these women into the same room in real life. So I started doing meetups in Brighton and they would sell out every time. And I just thought, okay, I'm on like I'm on to something here. Yeah. This is needed. This is great. Where have you yeah. been? Yeah. A human who wants to speak to me. What is this? this is and amazing. it was just it was just 
the magic you would feel in that room, it sounds so cliche, it sounds so trite, but once I would leave these meetups, I just felt so empowered, mm. so supported, so connected. And that's how Longo Band was kind of born. And I just kind of kept going with it. To start with, it was my kind of side hustle next to LH Design. But then throughout the years, I realized that's where my calling was, was helping female entrepreneurs and supporting them and giving them connections and everything like that. So that kind of slowly became my other full-time business. So I was running that LH design and then starting my coaching as well. So I was kind of running three businesses Whoa. at once, which is not recommended. <laughs> I do not recommend that. Um, and then I, I've had the idea for the space for years. I just never thought I could actually pull it off. It was always kind of the pipe dream. Yeah, um, it's a very have... grown up thing to do, isn't it? I guess going, it hi guys, feels... you want to come and play in my windy yeah. house? It's <laughs> like, it's like a thing, isn't it? Just a bit too adult, if anything. <laughs> it's just a bit, yeah, it was that little bit too far. Um, but just kind of it was pure luck and I know people say don't say it's luck it's all hard work but this really was luck or it was the universe it was it was some something happened where we managed to get a warehouse for basically nothing um had kind of the luck of the draw and it was just it just it all came together it all just kind of slotted in um so then we opened the space and then I shut down LH Design and decided to focus on Mongo Band and on my coaching but coincidentally I don't have I think oh I'd have so much spare time because I've let go of a business but I think I have even less time now (laughs) than when I had LH Design it's weird and what surprises have come from um creating the space and and bringing those um women together that 30 year olds don't wash up their mugs oh my that's a big one you're joking (laughs) that was kind of the that's probably the biggest challenge we've had and I'm not even joking but it, it's you gotten so much better like well. guys can you like I knew someone who used to live with this guy yeah. and he used to put his initials and a oh. line on how much milk he'd used so yeah, like okay. people I mean it just yeah it gets a bit bonkers yeah I mean we were it was not it wasn't that bad it was kind of just you know just just people just not washing up their mugs and I started with the passive aggressive notes and I thought no I need to be a grown-up here and yeah then I just said it and then people started washing up their mugs it was it's miraculous just communication helps <laughs> yeah yeah totally but no the kind of the the serious surprises have really just been that it's working I I really had no clue if it was going to work I I had no experience in real estate or in this side of business or kind of managing people um but we had our community before we had built early adopters kind of loyal core um a core group of people who were going to sign up no matter what so we always had people there um but yeah I think the biggest surprise is that it's working (laughs) yes and how have you navigated that sort of sense of CEO or leader even though sometimes like we all do when we're going to that next step of really having to you know send that less than easy email or Mm. ask for something or um, I had it a little while ago when somebody recorded my talk without permission and I had to kind of take a deep breath and sort of handle it and yeah um, kind of let them know that they've done wrong you do yeah without kind of shouting (laughs) at them you know (laughs) like a teacher but um what what strategies and, and tools have you used as you've moved into this sort of new chapter um I think it I'm trying to think sorry <laughs> just had a, my mind's gone black I think kind of the main thing that I kind of carry throughout my day is just don't be just don't be mean just be nice and yeah. but don't let people walk over you mm. um that's the big thing I've had to learn over the past year is kind of being nice not being um not being a d word and just yes. and, and yeah but also just not taking any rubbish just yeah. just just standing up basically but 
the, the thing I do when I'm kind of navigating those situations, luckily we I haven't really had any situations where I've had to kind of lay down the law or or kind of um, assert my power, if that's the right word. I don't know if that's the right sentence, but there is no power in what I do. <laughs> I think it's just being myself with it. So not being mean, not being horrible, not being malicious or nasty, um, but still kind of communicating in a way that shows that they can't walk over me. Yeah, I think, I it's, think it's really good. I feel like I've had to zip up some boundaries recently because I've oh. had a lot of things of, um, and that's not to say that I'm not, but <laughs> people are listening going, mm-hmm. I thought she was lovely, but you know, I often <laughs> get, the one of the words that people sort of say about me is like, oh, she's so lovely. Mm-hmm. And, I, uh, and I am, but equally, like I am running a business as well. And I think sometimes you have to tap into that moment of going, oh, actually, I need to, I need to look at that or I need to um yeah just just make sure that things are really clear and streamlined and all of that good Mm -hmm. stuff boundaries are your best friend like the the day I realized that I was just it's a hallelujah moment yes totally and what's it been like in terms of working alongside other people who are creative and forward thinking and interesting and and curious and all those sort of things rather than working um at home how is it um helps kind of not only your working environment but your your whole life I mean it's drastically changed it for the better I I I mean I don't work in the space every day now I used to be there Monday to Friday consistently but now because I'm either up in London or I've got meetings or I need to go and just write for a bit in the silence in the quiet um so I'm not there all the time but when I am there I go because I need to get out the house Mm -hmm. so I go as a kind of salvation um but it's just it's staggering how much of a difference it makes. And I'm not saying that to kind of sell co-working. I I think if it works for you, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But it really has made a massive difference in confidence and motivation. Accountability has been a big thing there. And just really just getting out of the house. Just having that option to get out of the house is is a salvation. And that need to put on a bra and a brush through your hair. Yeah, (laughs) having to shower has just (laughs) changed my working day. (laughs) But you're just like, no, because I think that's the thing, isn't it? That you can easily sort of fade onto the sofa or, you know, that you're, because you, I think that's the benefit of it. And certainly before I had Oscar, that everything was a bit more flexible. Now I have him, it's a bit, um, it's a bit more like right I've got 15 minutes how can I Mm. crack on but um I think it was just basically I wasn't using my time properly beforehand I think I'm just much more sort of strategic now but I think that sort of purpose of like yeah let's do this let's go somewhere else it kind of gives me that sense of um I'm actually doing this as well Mm, a lot of the girls say that they as they're walking in as they're kind of like it's almost like a commute it's going to work yeah and they have like they always just say how productive they are there because they know that they need to focus on work that's what they're there for but yes. whereas when you're at home you think oh I should put the dishwasher on yeah. or do the washing up or something like that there's always something else to be doing yeah of course whereas when you have somewhere to go and work and to go and just be you and not worry about kind of um just how you're coming across or anything like that not to worry about any other people and just focus on you it makes Mm. such a difference to productivity and everything yeah and just that sense of going what do you think of this is or do I is that giving off the right tone you know having that other pair of eyes and support is is lovely as well and how did the podcast start as well um so the podcast started in fact a year ago today is our anniversary which is bizarre if I was with you in person we would have some kind of brilliant cake yes oh I always be up for cake (laughs) you know that (laughs) no it started I have been kind of creating content well since the beginning really I've always written I've always done blog posts um and one girl band actually started as a blog series with my first business it was called I think it's something like being the one girl band behind your small business or something weird like that um (laughs) And I, so I've been writing the newsletters and the blog posts, and I've always loved podcasts. I love Adam Buxton and kind of the original podcasters. Mm. Um, 
and it just felt like a natural progression I I it kind of felt like there was either YouTube or podcasts and yeah. I knew I didn't want to do YouTube. I, I don't like speaking on camera and I, I don't kind of, I just, it doesn't really gel well with me. Whereas podcasting, I just, I love the accessibility of it, the creation, the process. It's just, it's, it's fun for me. Yeah. And I think, especially now when there's more and more podcasts coming out, which is brilliant, it's so, so good. But I feel like people are, uh, some people are starting to choose to do podcasts because they feel they have to. And then I hear them go, I hate it. Like I hate editing. I hate kind of, and I'm like, don't do it. If you don't like it, don't do it. It's, like, it's the same as stories on Inst- on Instagram. Like if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. No one is kind of sitting there going, you need to be doing a story right now. <laughs> why are you or, not being visible? Yeah. Like, where are you? Who, who are, like, why aren't you doing a podcast? It's like, you don't have to do absolutely everything you should only do the things that bring you joy and podcasting really brings me joy and writing brings me joy and it's it's just it's just a merger of those two things oh this word comes up so much in the podcast but that sense of permission as well of going oh. just do what you want to do because also a lot of content creation and putting yourself out there isn't necessarily paid so as much as you want to serve your eagerly mm-hmm. awaiting perhaps <laughs> not audience who might stroll across you as they're eating a chicken nugget or whatever that <laughs> they you know they I want my audience to be in a, a space where they're engaged and I don't want them just to I don't know stroll a- around it that you want to mm. make sure that what you're producing is is great and feels like a reflection of you yeah a hundred percent like everything has to be a hundred percent you um and I say that a lot but I truly truly mean it because otherwise we're going to get a few ways down the road and think why am I doing this this isn't me like this doesn't feel right and I remember when I first had the idea for the podcast I didn't do it for about two years I I really yeah I think everyone I've spoken to has been like yep no I didn't start until like a year later because there is it's right there's this permission kind of aspect of it all um and I just didn't want to be another white girl with a podcast adding to the noise I I kind of felt like there was enough of that that like I, that quota had been filled <laughs> kind of I didn't want to take up space essentially um but when I kind of realized okay this is the way I'm gonna do this is gonna be different from other people like my message is different my yes. approach is different voice is different my swearing is different like everything <laughs> like that it kind of it I just had this moment where I was like I just I just need to do it I just need to put it out there why am I procrastinating this and the second I submitted it, I mean, I nearly threw up, but yeah. it was really just a, oh, I've done it. I, I, I'm so, I'm just, I'm just, just so glad I've done it. And oh. it could have flopped. It could have done, like, I really didn't care at that moment. I was just like, I'm just so glad it's out there and it's not just in my head. Cause it had been in my head for two years. And I mean, that's, that's crazy talk. <laughs> I feel like, um, God, that's oh I'm just like <laughs> everything you're saying I'm like yes yes I feel like <laughs> we need to have podcast chat as well because I felt like I really had to maybe maybe it was my upbringing or I was going to say it's a northern thing but it but it's not because you're not but it's like um <laughs> like a sort of like don't because I guess we didn't have social media when we were teenagers or things like that it's that sense of only speak when you're spoken to or you don't want to be a show off or you you want to sort of wear the same kappa jacket as everybody else and Mm. I never wanted to wear a kappa jacket but um (laughs) I was more of an adidas uh, David Alban type chick but oh amazing uh, totally yeah and it's so weird now all this 90s fashion is coming back I'm like no still won't get me in an oatmeal colored crop top with a lumberjack shirt over it's never gonna happen um but I I think that sense of I really had to make sure that I had something to say because I know mm. people can effortlessly take pictures of themselves in a banging outfit in front of a door but mm. I do have that thing in the back of my head like if I'm going to put something on mine if I want to share something it's kind of got to mean something yeah it's got to have power it has to have impact but then I also think it doesn't it's, it's a catch-22 I feel like yes whatever you have to say is important And I feel we have spent so long in society, in schools, on social media that 
putting down people when they open their mouth Mm. and not letting them use their voice and I think that's where this all stems from this kind of oh I can't take up that space I can't do this I don't have permission for this I think it definitely I mean for me it comes from school and and my childhood kind of being told oh like you're nothing special like you just go go back to your corner kind of thing and yeah. you're, you're a bit odd you're a bit weird together because like we would totally have had a nice lunch <laughs> together and been like have you read this book yet? yeah yeah that was <laughs> that was me that was just I I, I was the odd kid kind of thing like I was very into music I was always at shows I was always kind of I was, I was very creative back then as well and I wasn't really into what all the other kids were into and that's not a bad thing I'm not saying they are bad people because they were into different stuff but it was more like I felt I mean obviously you don't realize until 10 years later yeah, but yeah, I when felt you're having like therapy <laughs> yeah when the therapist is like this is why like, of course of course it is yes. I felt like I couldn't open my mouth because I was going to be kind of I was yeah it it just wasn't going to go well and that has definitely been something I've had to work on throughout the years and work on getting through and just giving myself permission like I some days I literally just write myself a permission slip like I get a piece of paper and go you can do this you're allowed and then and then I do it it's it's bizarre it's a really the 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 human brain is just staggering (laughs) I think that's so important about who you share your ideas with and who you surround yourself with as well Mm -hmm. because I think I have had that understanding that actually some people are never going to get it and that's okay and like I always try and have that open heart and curiosity about what other people do like I'm still that person who is trying to is sitting next to somebody at a wedding trying to understand what affiliate marketing is or something and Matt's so like, what do you do yeah. and I'm, I'm being and I've had a few wines by that point so I'm really <laughs> eagerly listening but I think as well if you're out there online that people will just kind of see it but like it's nothing special but actually to put yourself out there and to say this is me it takes a I mean it's the biggest personal development journey of your life isn't it really there's such power in vulnerability and like it it's it's I think we all have kind of different levels of vulnerability some people kind of go all out and kind of put their almost um oh what's the word um health history online which is like like, there is no I I don't think there is ever too much information I don't think there's ever too little information I think it's all just such a personal subjective thing some people don't want to put what they've had for dinner on social media and that is totally fine some people do and that is totally fine but I think the important thing is is that we all have to be just open-minded and just kind of just accepting that people are going to use their voice and use a voice for good that is something that I feel with all this kind of um authenticity buzz and everything like that we need to be using it for good and trying to make some sort of change yes and we're recording this the day after Kim Kardashian posted that silly thing about it uh, yeah pop. I mean so, you're like, it, come on like, now, come on, lady. What is I have going actually, on? like, this week it, it's been quite a um, bad mental health week, so I actually deleted all my social media off my phone. Um, but it wasn't. I, I, I luckily went out last night, so I heard people talking about it. But I haven't actually seen it, but I can just envision what it was. I just, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. I'm really not. No. And I think it's sort of like as we move through this new era of online and yeah. what it means and the sort of sense of like doing stuff for likes. Um, Matt yeah. and uh, Oscar and I sort of had a day out in Greenwich the other day and we ended up walking bizarrely around the O2 in the middle of the day trying to get <laughs> him to sleep, which was really odd. But um, it was great for people watching. There were loads of teenagers who were queuing up to see a band that I can't even remember who they were but like that shows how cool I am (laughs) which is literally just taking oodles of selfies posing let's take Mm -hmm. it again and you might have thought that there was loads of you know that it was actual photo shoot going on but it was literally (laughs) just stuff to put online and it was sort of quite worrying (laughs) in a way that you're like oh gosh you're there five hours earlier are you going to keep doing this the whole time Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I think, again, it's just such a subjective thing. I think if if girls want to do that, then they should. Like, yeah. if, if that's something that brings them joy or they like kind of sharing their lives on the internet, I think that's fine. I really, As long as they're not being harmful towards other people or harmful towards themselves, yeah. I think it's fine. But I, I, I think it is just what it is now almost. I think we have experienced, even in the last 10 years, such a shift in in sharing and Mm. the internet is definitely a part of that but it's funny because I this week not having any social media on my phone I I had this realization well I I mean I'm addicted to my phone and I know I am I'm I'm willing to admit that what have you done in the time that you haven't been on social media I bet you've like you know built a boat or like oh no just sat on my sofa and cried that's all I've done It's, it's been a no it's been a weird one but it It really made me realise that I rely so heavily on one little app just just Mm. to to run my business, to make money, to do what I do. I rely so heavily on that. And it really I think you have have to have these moments of, okay, I need to I, I obviously still need to show up, I still need to make myself known through these channels, but I need to rely on it so much less. And I think that's what these young people who are growing up today, they're going to have that realisation, whether that's this week in five years. Like, they're going to have that realisation of, okay, maybe I don't really want this picture of me online or maybe I don't really want to be on my phone 24-7 or maybe I do and that's fine. I think we've all just got to do what works for us and just not let other people... Just not let other people get into it and, mm. and to make us feel bad enjoying something yeah oh. Does that make sense? Just gone off on a massive tangent? no it makes total sense and I feel like I feel like I wish I'd known that at school I wish I'd known that when I was trying to just carve out like who the heck I was and yeah. like you I felt like I was quite different from a lot of the people there and again it's not it's not to be mean because I think some of them listen to this podcast <laughs> but um but yeah I definitely had I had a different kind of vision and you know when the careers talk does the prison officer you would be perfect I'm like really I'm five two I'm not particularly dynamic in a confrontational yeah, situation <laughs> yeah exactly um but yeah I, these tools are so important in these conversations um to have out there has there been a book that sort of um changed things for you that you always um come back to or maybe you just read it once but it it's, it was really pivotal. I think the most recent book that's been like that, I read it in January at the beginning of the year, and it was Start With Why, Simon Sinek. Uh. It's just, it it really changed. It changed my business. It changed my approach to business. It changed how I do life, essentially. I know wow. Much, right? But it, just putting the why at the heart of everything you do, you are guaranteed to go far. And yes. Not worrying too much about the what so your products and how you show up and but what you are there to do like what what you are there to make people feel and how you want yourself to feel and why you're actually doing this work and why you're showing up and just ask yourself why 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 and it has just it's it's helped me kind of to differentiate I can never say that word. You know what I meant. I totally <laughs> do. Yep. I had speech therapy as a kid, and I still sometimes like, I need to go back. I need oh, to go back. <laughs> I do this weird thing where I like sometimes <laughs> Matt just always laughs at me. I te- I re- test the word behind my hand first, and he's like, "Are you practicing it before you say it?" I'm like, "Yes, I totally yeah. am." But we now have a joke about it because he knows exactly what I'm doing. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, I I I do that word <laughs> and. It made me realise that I was going after things that perhaps I didn't truly want. I was mm. just going after them because it looked like I should. So at the beginning of the year, I had kind of a massive, I call them CEO days, where I just sit down and figure out what the heck is going on, what I want to do, what I want that year to look like. Ooh, um, I love that. Yeah, it's very, it, it's intense, but it's, it's exciting. It, it's good fun. But 
I, at the beginning of the year, I was like, yeah, I want to get investment. I want to become this female CEO, massive kind of multi-million like empire with staff and everything like that. And then I hit, I think it was March, March, April, where I just went, I don't want that. I, I don't want that. Like, I, I, I want to do things on my own terms. And I want the flexibility and I want the freedom. I want the money. I, I do want to make lots of money. And I'm okay with saying that. I don't think that's bad to say. But I don't want that pressure. I don't want that kind of um, lack of control and everything like that. And I think I was so wooed by this um, female founder kind of status and so like, oh, everyone would think I'm so cool and like the image would just be amazing but I didn't think of the realities at the time and I just got I got carried away with what I should with what I felt like I should be doing um but when I had that realization I just stripped everything back and now I'm going after what I truly want and that's what you have to do at the end of the day you have to go after what you truly desire and what you what you feel will give you the most fulfillment and contentment rather than the stuff that everyone else is doing. And how does that feel now that you've made that shift in your head? I think, this is going to sound really lame, but freeing. It, yeah. it, it was a just, I think we ebb and flow. So we have kind of these peaks and troughs and we go through different phases. We go through different times and we we are allowed to evolve like I was saying at the beginning we're allowed to change our mind thank and god I, know. <laughs> I would have been with some right jackass uh yeah type relationship situation yeah. I mean it, it's but re- you it, it's almost like you realize that every single time it's, mm. it's like you don't remember it continuously you have to go through these moments of shift and change and and disaster really you have to go through these moments of tragedies and yeah. horrible horrible stuff for you to go okay this isn't I'm not living my life in the way I want to and that was the whole reason I became self-employed the whole reason why I'm my own boss is to live my life on my terms and it was really just that realization of I wasn't living my life on my own terms and that was defeating the entire purpose of what I was doing. Yeah. And I like the thing about like live it being the best version of yourself. When I'm not the best version of myself, God, I feel it. And actually I take the most action. And um, sometimes, yeah, in those moments of death or illness or change of circumstance or regret or um unpredictability that's when you kind of go all right buckle up here we go let's let's go a different way and and figure it out if we can you just adapt adapt and that's what that's what we're good at humans we're good at adapting yeah for sure um I've got one final question for you which is where would you like to be in five years time Mm -hmm. I always struggle with this. Question. I know. I don't know why. I feel like five years. I'm like, wow, oh, I've ages away, but it's not. It's really no. Not. I think I would want to. Oh, I'm trying to think of it in like a coherent sentence. Um, I still want to be doing what I'm doing. I want to mm. be helping female entrepreneurs um live the life that they deserve and desire, and just giving them the platform to live their life in their own terms and um, that's definitely my calling it's definitely what I want to do for the rest of my life but in terms of kind of the itty-gritty kind of little details of it I possibly I I don't think I'd be coaching then I, I feel like this is just a, a stage of my career if that makes mm. sense I, I, I don't feel like it's what I want to do for the rest of my life which has been an interesting um an interesting kind of realization to have but I definitely still want one go around to be going I would love to be opening up other spaces around the country and just really just honing in on the brand um maybe have a book maybe Actually, I just I just want to be seen, I think, and that's not in kind of a narcissistic, arrogant way. I, I want to be seen so that this message of female entrepreneurship and mental health and everything that I talk about is, it's, it's prevalent. Yeah, and just being part of the conversation and bringing yeah. your 
your flavour to it. Um, yeah. There's another coach, I can't remember who says it, but that thing of like somebody needs to hear it from you. And I know lots of people who listen to this podcast, they, they may have sort of thought, oh, well, aren't there enough bloggers, writers, small business owners, crafty people? Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> as in like people who make stuff, not like crafty, crafty, <laughs> um, but people who make stuff <laughs> from their kitchen table. And yeah. it's like, no, seriously, like we're, waiting for you I interviewed um a couple who have Fred and Noah um the brand and they create children's wear and they said for ages they resisted Instagram and now they have so many followers and it was like Instagram was waiting for them like oh finally you're here we need you thanks no one is you and that is your power that's what I always say and it's it's a very trite um, quote, but it's just so powerful because mm. it's true. Like, you are you. No one else is you. The way you are going to do things is completely different to what other people are doing. Yes, you might be doing something similar, but title-wise, you might have the same, you might have the same job, you might do the same thing every day, but the way you're doing it is completely different, and that's where the difference is. That's, that's what makes, that's what makes you, that's what makes your business. Oh, yeah. Yes, and it's so simple, but you just have to be reminded of it because oh, when you're in that, fast. yeah, yeah, it's because you. I think sometimes you're in that fog of like, am I just doing what everybody else is doing? Or yeah, it can sometimes be tricky to take a step back. But um, if people want to get to know more about you and the space and your coaching, where sh- and if they're in Brighton as well, they can come down presumably and yeah, have yeah. have a. A, a tour I when you said warehouse I imagined it was like that one in um uh, not Sweet Valley High Heartbreak High from the 90s where like there's just like cool yeah, grungy not. kids just like <laughs> hanging around and not going to no, school but um... it's dusty it's a little bit cold <laughs> oh. it's, it, it's kind of it's, it, it's, it's like a tourist attraction it's like a little was built in 1910 so who knows what kind of shenanigans has gone on here and um yes um but like if they want to find out more where should they go um so on instagram i am at lola hode underscore and then one girl band is at one girl band underscore um i'm on twitter i think it's probably lola hode underscore we'll find them we'll find them yeah (laughs) and then just lola hode Wonderful, thank you. Yes, yeah, we're business chart pals, and I'm so happy that we're we're in there because um, yeah, we were just saying before that there's a lot of sort of sweaty men sort of talking about hitting hard the hustle, and oh my god, I'm so no. Exactly. <laughs> Lola, thank you so much. I've loved our chat. Thank you. It's so quick. I know. <laughs> Anytime you want to come back, I'm always here. Thank well, you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and I would love to hear what you thought of the episode and share any takeaways with me. Come and find me across social media at Nikki Raby or you can visit the podcast page nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast.